Hi, my name is Carla Campos, and I am the founder of Florida Social Con. Today we have Kathy Hackel, I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> with us, and she's going to talk to us about what she does, some meerkat, some periscope, and some great things going on today. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Hi, Carla, thanks for having me. I'm super excited about going down to Miami. I'm in Gainesville, Florida, and I'm going to come down to Miami for Florida Social Con. Super excited. Um, well, and like Carla said, my name is Kathy Hackel. Um, I have a social media marketing agency called Globally Social, and um, I also teach at a, at a university in Spain, and I'm going to start teaching at Flo at University of Florida, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I just got asked to come on board as the PR director for Periscope Summit in New York Scope Week, so it's really exciting stuff. You know, a lot of news I need to talk about, so, yeah. Awesome. And how long have you been using Meerkat and Periscope? Uh, I started using Meerkat probably a week after it came out, after I saw Carlos Jill, uh, who works with LinkedIn. I saw him do, do his first um, first ever Meerkat. He was, he did, you know, no one really knew what to do. So he was showing us his baseball card collection, which is hilarious. Um, but then, you know, everyone just started using it South by Southwest. So I was, you know, I didn't go to South by Southwest, um, but I was, you know, quite active using it on my own. Uh, and then on March 26, when Periscope came out, I mean, I was in, I was in actually teaching my class in Spain, and I jumped on it from day one, and I have been using it. I mean, I probably scope three to four times a day. Yeah, so it's it's been. I mean, I've been very very much active in kind of the live streaming um, mobile to mobile um, arena right now. And what is your name on Periscope? How can we find you there? It's at Kathy Hackle. So same as Twitter. So at Kathy Hackle, uh, same thing on Meerkat. Uh, and I, I use both, and I currently, and we'll, we'll get more into this, I currently use both, um, but I do find that I spend a little bit more time on Periscope because um, I, I have, I guess, more followers there, so I have more, more interaction, let's say. Okay, that's good. And are there any differences that, system-wise, that would make you pick a, one system over the other, or? Well, there's there's different things. I mean, I love that Periscope has that that Periscope is owned by Twitter, so it's connected to Twitter, and you know the conversation comes out uh, through Twitter, as does Meerkat. You know, but obviously they when when they when per, when Twitter bought Periscope, the access to the graph was cut. So now you know the Meerkat didn't have that. Um, some of the things that Meerkat does that I love. Um, one of them is the fact that people can watch from their computer and comment from their computer. Um, so there's that interaction, which isn't available yet in Periscope. Um, yeah, which is, you know, um, and also like with uh, with Meerkat, when you're in there, and I'll, I'll show this during the class, you'll see like little bubbles that pop up on the top with the picture of the person. So it's really nice to kind of identify some of the folks, whereas in Periscope, um, you'll see like there's like a chat room at the bottom and people type in things. And sometimes you have to kind of like squint to kind of see the comments and figure out who, who it is. So, um, so yeah, I think Meerkat does a better job at that for sure. Um, and the, the guys, and I have to tell you, like the people at Meerkat, when I had an issue with my with my uh, with my handle, were amazing. Like their their customer service people were great. So, um, so you know, that's one of the things definitely. That's great. Yeah, you always need good customer service. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in social and you you're serious about it, you need to have, have good customer service. So. Yes. Okay, and you're going to do some live streaming today while we're chatting, you were telling yes, me? Yes, after we're done with this, we're going to do a little Periscope interview um, talking about, you know, Florida Social Con and also uh, bilingual social media because I know that you do you do a lot of that. Obviously, you're in South Florida, so yes. <laughs> so it's going to be exciting. And during the session, during my session in, uh, in Miami, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to be doing, we're going to be doing some live streams on Meerkat and Periscope and showing folks kind of the interaction and kind of the best practices and, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, and can you tell everyone watching what the title of your session is and what you're going to be teaching the folks at SocialCon to yeah. do with Meerkat and Periscope? Yeah, it'll be, it's called Leveraging Your Brand Using Live Streaming Apps, so Meerkat and Periscope. Um, you know, there's a few others, but they're not as heavy, you know, not as competitive right now, let's say. Uh, there's you now, um, and there's like, actually an Indian startup that launched one, and apparently there's another one. But the big, the big players right now are definitely Periscope and Meerkat. And we're going to be teaching folks. I'm going to be teaching the like kind of a little bit about the history, then a little bit about how to use it in your business, uh, how to help you know your brand leverage your brand, um, how to you know leverage your personal brand or your or company brand 
using video, um, you know, and, and mirror kind of periscope. There's lots of questions right now. And like, people are like, I'm not sure how to use it. They're a little scared of like, it's, you know, real life, you know, real life video um, on, you know, so it, there's a lot of questions. I also want to show them examples of brands that are doing an amazing job. I mean, there are folks that really get it and I love it. Um, for example, and he, you know, he is a brand in himself, Neil Diamond, who, you know, everyone knows. He, instead of banning Periscope from his concerts, his wife periscopes every single one of his concerts. Wow. So it's great because he's making himself more relevant. He gets it, you know, and I love that interaction. I was watching one yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Um, so things like that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show, I'll show them some case studies of brands or artists that are doing really better using it correctly. Um, and also, I'll also go into kind of the three, um, the three pillars, let's say, uh, that are entertaining, educating and engaging, which are key to kind of being successful using it. So, and it's, and Carla, it's fairly new. You know, this has been, go like, this has only been around since February. <laughs> I can't hear you, that's some kind of airplane. This is <laughs> going by my house. <laughs> it's your jet, it's your personal jet. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, this this has only been around for a couple weeks, so it's fairly new. No one, no one is really an expert. Um, but as an early adapter, I've been playing with it. I've been using it. I, I really try to stay on top of what's going on in the industry. So. Of course. Yeah, you have to stay on top of it because people come to you to learn. So yeah. it's great that you're adopting it and already know like the brands that are using it and can tell people how to use it for their brand, which is what people want you know, in the business world. So yeah. very happy to have you speaking at SocialCon. Thank you. So... Um, these apps interact with Twitter. Do you are you going to speak about maybe some Twitter practices as well, or uh, definitely I can definitely bring that into the fold in the sense that you know one of the things that I tell folks when I'm doing my scopes every once in a while is like don't forget to connect with people on other social media because the cool thing about Periscope and Meerkat is that you're building that real life engagement. Uh, like I can tell you, I've built this really awesome community of friends on Periscope and. Um, you know, I engage with a lot of people on Twitter, but on Periscope, it's become a little more personal just because they see you every day. You know, they see me with makeup, without makeup, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like a little crazy. Um, but, you know, I always tell them to take it to different platforms. So, you know, if, for example, when I connect with someone on Periscope that's, um, that's you know, that I, that I talk on the phone with and things like that, I connect with them on LinkedIn and I take it further. So, um, and definitely, you know, I definitely think um, you can always go back on Twitter and comment on people's scopes if you re if you watch something on replay that you really love. Oh, and that's one thing, you know, Meerkat streams uh, disappear. You know, you can use a service to to catch them, um, but Meerkat, or you can save it to your camera roll if you prefer to do so. But in general, they're not available for replay. Whereas with Periscope, they live on for twenty four hours, so you can replay, which is you know really exciting. Like if I'll miss one of my friend's scopes. I'll go in and watch it and then I'll be like, I'll tweet at them and be like, I loved your scope or, hey, I want to find out more about this service. Or, so, so there's, you know, there's a lot, lot, of, lot of ways we can do it and we can take it beyond Periscope into Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. Oh, and Meerkat does have kind of a partnership in some way with Facebook where you can live stream your video through Facebook. But I think they're still kind of working out some kinks on how to make it, you know, visible to folks. Oh, okay. you speak Spanish, Sí. Ah, bueno. Salvador. Ah, qué bien. Yo soy de Costa Rica. Oh, okay. Nice. Centroamérica in the house. So, okay, now that we're back on air, we, we lost um, our connection, but we're back. So, um, want to talk about, since we just had like this little Central America moment, let's talk yeah. about the Latin marketing and what do you what let's see do you have any brands that are latin on periscope that you know that you think are doing a great job i haven't really seen i haven't seen that many folks in latin america using it i mean i think that now that it launched for android there's going to be a lot more adoption because you know latin america tends to be very android heavy so um so i think we'll see definitely more adoption um, i'm actually one of the few people that does bilingual scopes where I'll go from, you know, from I'll do English and then I'll do the same one in Spanish and go back and forth. Oh, so I haven't really seen that. But I think we're going to definitely see a lot more. I've seen like newscasters in Spain and Latin America using it kind of the behind the scenes. But as far as brands go, not yet. I, I mean, we're going to expect, just expect a lot of brands to jump on and use it, you know, 
you know, whichever language. So, um, but right now I can tell you like the brands that I love, what they're doing. Applebee's has been amazing. Um, they, they did, they had this big launch of their new menu in Times Square. It was like a week and a half ago or two weeks. And they actually, um, they actually got Vincenzo Landino um, to kind of take over their Periscope. And Vincenzo was there and he was interviewing Jason Derulo. And it was just a really fun experience to kind of do that behind the scenes. And just to have like, give it to an influencer to like take over. It was instead of having like a corporate person or just showing the event, this was fun. It was interactive. Vincenzo did an amazing job. Um, so uh, definitely that. Taco Bell, you know, which, you know, you probably wouldn't expect, but they're doing a cool job as well. Um, what else? Uh, MasterCard's been doing fun stuff. I mean, so there's just like a lot of brands. Um, one of the things that I love, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not a horror movie person, but the folks at Poltergeist, uh, the, fo the folks at Collider, who, do, uh, who did the remake of Poltergeist, had the coolest idea for Periscope. They sent out to movie critics um, this kind of invitation and said, step into the portal. And they could, they could follow them on, uh, um, on Periscope. And once they stepped into kind of their, their stream, they, it was like a, a, like a you know, poltergeist, like a, you know, like a ghost, let's say, in the back. You couldn't quite see what it was. And it would welcome everyone into the room. And then it would say stuff. It was really scary. And then it would flash images of the movie, which apparently is very scary. And then towards the end, they had, like, tons of hands. So it's, like, all these poultry guys trying to break through the through the phone. So they had, like, these images of the phone getting cracked. So it's like the poultry guys was coming at you. Um, so that engagement, and I have to say I'm not a scary movie person, but that kind of engagement was brilliant. They really got the marketing side of, of what you can do on Periscope and, that, and bring people in, that engagement. So. Yeah, I'm scared just sitting here thinking about it. I'm like, oh, right? it's definitely like not going audience. there. It sounds awesome, but I'm not going there. I'm not going to watch it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah, idea and the marketing behind it, I was like, that is pure brilliance. Because, like, and, and I'll send you a link. It's really cool. Um, You could see, like, the screen, like, cracking. They're, like, your your phone was supposed to be cracking, and they should be coming, like, after you. But So, just really brilliant. Really I'm going to take one for the team, okay? I'm going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Just to <laughs> For the educational purposes. <laughs> educational purposes. People that need to appreciate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Never so, you. how long have you been working in the marketing and how long um, have you been? I've been I was a journalist for several years. I worked um, in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, and then I switched over to public relations in 2007. So when I switched over, um, you know, there's also like Twitter was fairly new. So I started doing some social media at that point for some of my clients. Um, and I would say, like, it's been, you know, I've probably been doing marketing, communications, and social media in the mix for probably seven years. But I, I've been really, really involved in social, I would say, for the last year, where I've been kind of really, like, dedicated to it. Like, that's my, like, the way I say it is PR is my fuel, but social media is my passion. And I've leveraged it, yeah, I've leveraged, leveraged it into, you know, teaching, you know, speaking opportunities, teaching, you know, at, at several universities, and now, in, and obviously I have clients from, from whom I wish, for whom I do social. So it's just really exciting. It's been, it's been awesome. Um, do you have, like, how do your students react? Do you teach Periscope at your, in your social media classes, or? Well, this is the funny thing. When I went, um, when I taught my last class in March, it was so new. It was right when it came out, when Periscope came out. So I showed them Meerkat a little bit, you know, it wasn't really part of the class at that point. Um, but I did a few interviews with them, a couple of Meerkats, um, and they were all very interested. And I actually, just last week, I did an, um, a, an interview with one of my students because he does a lot of work in, with, mille, with the millennial mindset. Um, so I did a Periscope Life, you know, Life Periscope interview with him. And thing, but it's definitely going to be um, in my, my next class that I teach in October. It's definitely going to be part of, you know, a bigger part, let's say. Than it, than it was before, so. Yeah, yeah because it's like, it, it's so new, people are so excited about it, so it's, yeah. you know, great. And then you're going to teach them how to use it for business, you know, which is awesome, so. Yeah. We're very excited to have you. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, and also, you know, the, the really cool thing, I think, is that there's this community being built um, in Periscope. There's lots of people making connections and making friendships or what have you. So the community wanted a kind of a conference or somewhere to come together and meet everyone. Um, and it's becoming a reality. We have Periscope Summit that's um, going to be kind of a two-part thing. Uh, we're going to have New York Scope Week, 
So like, not New York Fashion Week, New York Scope Week. Um, in New it York. sounds more like my thing. So I think I want to, I want to attend. <laughs> it's going to be really exciting. And the one in New York is going to have like breakout sessions, panels, kind of more education. Um, and also there's going to be lots of parties in the evening, like sponsored by different brands. So it's going to be really fun. And then in January of next year, Periscope Summit in San Francisco is going to be kind of more of an award show. So they'll be, it's really exciting. And people in the fans are going to be able to vote on different categories on their different scopers and because, you know, there's all these celebrities being launched on Periscope so fast, so, so fast. So, um, so yeah, you know, I'll definitely, you know, I'll definitely talk a little bit about Periscope Summit at the class and, and you know, in case people are interested in attending and what have you, because it's, you know, that education portion of it is going to be exciting. So, And everybody wants a chance to get to be known. And I think, like, you know, when these new um, networks come out like Periscope that people have a chance to you know be seen become famous so this is a good thing for brands who maybe don't get Facebook or to build a community there's actually it was really cool just this week um, just this weekend um, the first uh, mark the first like marketing agency for musicians on Periscope launched because there's so many amazing musicians on Periscope that you've never heard of but that are amazing and they're, you know, they're starting to build a, you know, a fan base on Periscope. So it's, it's just crazy. It's, it, it's, I love it. I mean, I'm completely obsessed with per Periscope and Meerkat. So. <laughs> and you come from the PR background. So, um, what do you think are the opportunities for new musicians coming out with these new networks where they can kind of just explore, like you were saying, become superstars on their own, like? I mean, there's so many opportunities to kind of reach people that they might have not reached and also on a global scale because you have people jumping in from everywhere. So if you if you time your scopes at a certain time, you're going to get more people from the UK. If you're doing it later, you might get more West Coast. So it's, you know, timing. It, it can also be used for good, um, which I love. There was a, a little girl in, I think it was Nebraska, um, and she has severe epilepsy. And her mom, um, who's on Periscope, you know, she watches a lot of Periscope, and the little girl loved this musician's called the musician called Sam King, and he is an American based in Berlin, in Germany, and um, and she loved the music. And the other day, when the little girl was having severe seizures, and she has to wear this little helmet, um, in between seizures, she would tell her mom she wanted to listen to Sam King from Periscope. So eventually, I guess Sam found out, and he did a little concert, little live concert on Periscope for her which, you know, to this little girl means the world. So, yeah, so, you know, there's so many uses for it. I, I mean, yeah, I can go on and on. <laughs> and I can listen forever. So, <laughs> do you get any um, people telling you, eh, I don't want to use, like, any naysayers towards Periscope? Yeah, there's definitely people that think, you know, um, oh, you know, it might not be the best thing for my brand. I mean, I think that depending on your brand and, you know, the space you're in, you will use it more or less. It definitely gives you an opportunity as a, you know, as, as a human, as a human to show the human side of what your business is. Um, Hootsuite, for example, did what's, um, what was called Follow the Sun. And um, through Hootsuite Life, which is kind of their culture and, you know, this is who we are. They did this thing where they gave their Periscope handle um, to, hands, to their employees. So they had employees all around the world do little scopes about what, it, what it's like to work at Hootsuite. So that is, you know, beautiful because you kind of got to see their culture. You got to see kind of like, yeah, we know what's, what Hootsuite is. You know, we know how to use, like a lot of folks know how to use it. But this was different. It was showing the people behind Hootsuite. So, you know, so there's just, there's so many ways to use it. And depending on who you are and your brand. And one thing I tell people is like, don't be scared to promote yourself on, on, um, on Periscope. You know, tell people what you do. So. Do you, do you get business owners who don't get like, social the new social marketing theme like how, what are your experiences with that yeah i've gotten people that just are like scared of it i mean and like i said not everyone needs to be on periscope and meerkat it really depends on your space um but you know i definitely think that you know you should get in there and look at it and play with it and see what it is you might really like it from a personal standpoint but i have come across you know business that are maybe a little um behind and don't really embrace it or don't understand the power that social has. And um, I'm not sure if you're the one that tweeted it out or not, but there was a stat that came out uh, about British Airways and their customer service on social media. 
um, I don't know if it was British Airways. I tweeted something about I tweeted something. Yeah, and I was I was an airline. I think it was British Airways that literally was able to quantify the return on investment, a uh, return on engagement, really, from what their social media customer service did. You know, do because it was like I don't know how many millions of dollars it translated into. Um, so you know, I think that that now that we have data like that, that you know, you can really show that to business owners and be like. You know, there's a reason why this airline is doing this. You know, because airlines have a hard time. And it's like, wow, it's showing that it has a really impact on business. Yeah, definitely. The stats, you know, help prove the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I like to talk about Twitter for some reason. You, I, That's how I kind of connect with you all the time on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, Twitter's my playground. I love Twitter. <laughs> so, Do you have some of your favorite hashtags you like to share with us today? Yeah, I mean, Periscope. <laughs> Hashtag Periscope. Periscope. <laughs> um, no, I do. Um, you know, I do a lot of Twitter chats. So, like, hashtag influencer sh chat or, um, uh, you know, hashtag keep it real, things like that. Or hashtag mommy problems because I'm a mom. So, because, yeah, I, I try to keep it, you know, my Twitter, and I think most people do this, they, they do a lot of business, but they have personal stuff, too. Like, if I have an issue with my kid, I'll tweet it out sometimes, um, you know. So it's, it's I, I mean, I love Twitter. Twitter really is my playground. And I know you love it, too, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little quiet these days on it, but, yeah, I like Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And I like Facebook, too. Don't get me wrong. I do spend some time on it, more for personal, to be honest, um, than anything. But, but yeah, I mean, obviously, for small businesses, it's huge. It's huge, you know, the, the potential for selling, so. Yes. And what was I going to ask you? I just had something in my mind, and it slipped. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see. So, um, you're talking about being a mom. Do you know any like really cool mom brands that are on Periscope? Not yet. I mean, I've seen a few mommies that are jumping on. That's the thing. I haven't really seen a lot of mommy bloggers jumping on. I have a really good friend in Atlanta who is a huge mommy blogger in the community, in the African American community, and I was just talking to her, and I'm going to interview her, you know, this week uh, on Periscope. Um, because she's a, she used to be a former journalist. She's an Emmy, um, Emmy, Emmy award winning journalist. And I'm like, you need to jump on board because it's her area. It's, you know, and everyone can do it. You know, you don't have to be an Emmy nominated anything. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, I think like, I haven't really seen that many folks. I have seen a lot of folks show their kids. Um, I'm a little bit more of a, in that sense, I try to keep my privacy. I mean, my daughter was on my scope a little bit yesterday, but um, cause she kind of barged in. So I didn't save that scope. You know, I didn't save that scope or I, bar I barely show my kids on Periscope because that's how I like it. But some people are fine with it. So, you know, everyone to each his own. To each his own. And you talk a lot about, because you were in the journalism field, so you know yeah. journalism. So how do you feel journalism is changing because of social media? Wow. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's, a, it's, such, a, it, it's such a big change. Like, for example, the fact that, um, that now there's going to be the pub, like the publishing side of it on Facebook for media is huge. You know, um, I feel bad for a lot. Sometimes I feel bad for some of my journalist friends because I see all these, you know, layoffs and all these things happening. But when you see something like that, there's like so much hope again. And there's just this integration into, you know, journalism and social as well as in PR, you know, PR and marketing and social. It's, they're not going to be separate silos anymore. Everything's coming together to be like this one thing. You know, you're not going to have a social media team. No, every, everything's going to be integrated. Um, so I think that it's definitely changing. Uh, I've seen lots of newscasters, lots of newscasters using Periscope, kind of do the behind the scenes right before they go on air. Um, and one of the things I do love, like there's Scott Budman, who's a technology reporter in, uh, in the Bay Area, and he, he'll do his scopes and he'll ask, you know, he said, ask me questions. So people will ask questions about technology or about investing on a certain, you know, startup or have, he doesn't answer all of them necessarily. Um, but that access, I think from a PR perspective, that access to a journalist one-on-one -on -one where you can ask him a question, amazing. I mean, because you already had that on Twitter, but this is like you're staring him, you know, you're staring him on the in the face. He's not looking at you, but he's seeing your question. So talking to you back and forth, like interacting, the questions yeah. he does see. Yeah, I tweeted to him and said, Hey, do you what are your thoughts on Periscope Summit? And he was like, I haven't heard of it. So I was like, Okay, awesome. Great opportunity for me to kind of send them info on Periscope Summit. So, you know, not to say that we should all be doing, you know, pitching to everyone on every reporter on Periscope, but it's a great way to kind of get in there and also have that access, you know. Yeah. 
the power of social media. <laughs> I know. I love it. <laughs> so have you been working on any exciting projects where you're using Meerkat or not really? Um, not really. I mean, I, I just got tagged to be like the Periscope Summit um, PR director. So that's kind of going to be one of my main, fo like my main focus, I think, um, as well as taking care of some of my clients. Um, and my clients, to be honest, I've got a client in Australia, one in Singapore. There's one in Atlanta. So I don't have a huge client base right now. Um, because I've been transitioning, so, um, but it's fine, you know, and I think that we're going to, with them, I do more Facebook, Instagram, a little bit of Twitter, um, you know, some LinkedIn, but um, once we get to that point, I definitely think we're going to get them um, on Periscope or Meerkat. I mean, there's definitely hesitation, you know, because you have to, you have to be, you know, the camera's your friend, you know, people, people can get a little scared with cameras, so. Yes, that's great that you bring that up, because People like tell me because I do videos on Facebook and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. People, are, oh my God, you're so brave. So, what do you tell people that that are scared to be on video? Like, what what are your tips for them? One of the tips that you know, and I want to talk about this at the, at the session is the reality is that when you're scoping or meerkatting, you're looking at yourself. You know, right now, like I'm looking at you, but when you're pure scope or meerkatting, you're just looking at yourself. So just get comfortable. It's like you're looking at yourself in the mirror. You know, practice it. If you, if you don't feel, if you feel like, oh my gosh, I can't do this, practice in front of the mirror, talking to yourself about whatever it is that you want to talk about on Periscope, because that's the reality. And yeah, you're going to ask questions, but you can always, always hide the chat if you don't want to see that. Um, and you know, people are like, oh my gosh, but what if someone says something? Yes, there are going to be trolls and there are going to be haters, you know, but the reality is you can block them. And I've gotten some of those, you know, and you just, you just block them. You know, if they say something inappropriate, completely inappropriate, <laughs> you can block them and that's end of story. You know, they can't be on your streams anymore. So, you know, and, and people get into these like spats, you know, as they do on Twitter, they do the same thing on Periscope, but you can always block someone or, you know, limit that. So, yeah, stay positive, friends. Stay positive. <laughs> it just, you know, and I love this. My friend's daughter was saying this the other day. He, I mean, he shows his daughter and that's what he, what he likes to do, but she was saying, the camera is your friend. And that's true. I mean, we have so much, you know, in our little, in our phones. Oh my gosh, it's just a world of potential. So use, use it for good though. Use it for good. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> use it for good people. <laughs> so, um, yes. So of course I can ask you. So I've been using Meerkat maybe like a week because I'm an Android person. So yeah. yeah, like a week. And like talking to you makes you want to go like, and I was going to use it yesterday for one of our meetups, but like talking to you makes you want to go out there and just like, <laughs> Start meerkatting on the hour. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Look at my life, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's as far as it's how much you want to take it to. You know, I do it a few times a day. I'm not, there's people that live on Periscope. Literally, literally, there's something called a sleep cast oh. or a sleep scope where people just Periscope while they're sleeping. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to be I'm kidding you. Oh. It does happen. And, um, and my, one of my friends did the other day, he did a 24 hour scopathon. So 24 hours straight on Periscope. It was, I mean, he did it. It was an experiment really, but you're going to see these things. The way I see it is like, it's very true man showy. We're getting to that point that if you want it, and I don't recommend this. <laughs> and if you wanted to live stream the birth of your child, you could, you know, I probably, no way, there's no way. Uh, but, <laughs> but we're getting to that point where, you know, it's real time and it's, it's just, I think we're at the right time, you know, live streaming is nothing new, but we're at the right time where there's 4G, LTE, you have that capability. Um, and it's just, and there's this need, there's this, this is craving for this type of video. And you know who I love? Oh my gosh. Uh, the the CEO, CEO of T-Mobile, who is a total social CEO. Oh my gosh. But he is a huge fan of Periscope. He scopes quite often. And it'll, it's interesting to see like a CEO and ask, you know, not everyone can ask questions because there's a limit on the amount of people that can chat. Um, but it's really interesting to kind of have that, you know, access to him. Crazy. So. And I love those social CEOs. Like I have a great time with them. Like there are some people who are not social. What do you say? Like, I mean, you can't force people to change who they are, but what would you say to them? Uh, some of the positive benefits of being social CEOs? Oh my gosh. Well, I think it's part of being, you know, you know, it's, you know, being current and staying current and understanding your, this understanding your customers. I mean, that's the reality of it. Um, there's uh, Mark Babbitt and Ted Coyne, I think that, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but they just wrote a book 
and they in the book they do talk about the blue unicorn which is the social media ceo that ceo that it really gets it so i think definitely john um the ceo of t-mobile is a blue unicorn and he gets it you know and he's himself he doesn't care he's a you know he does his thing and he can be cranky at times or not you know whatever but that's who he is and people like love him it's really it's really um it's really interesting to watch him as a case study that's the thing you know yeah you're making me want to go watch him <laughs> go watch him he is amazing i mean there's so much going on in periscope and all these people um and i'm going to share like for example i'm going to share some of the folks that i like in different categories you know so people people that people that might just be starting off are like oh my gosh there's all these people i don't know who to follow who has great content i'm going to share a list of some of the folks that i think are doing great on you know um, you know, tips or music or, you know, art or all these different categories, motivational. We've got someone, um, Alexa, Alexa Carlin, who's down in South Florida, and she does amazing motivational scopes every morning at 7.30 a.m. So some folks, I mean, she has a, a really good following because people just wake up, watch her scope, which is short, and just start their day off in, you know, in the right way. So there's just a lot of amazing folks doing great things, so... So I have some friends in the movie and the media industry and, you know, I have some that say, oh my God, social media is kind of killing, you know, our industry. And usually I'm just like, you know, you just have to learn to adapt. Like, you know, the industry is changing. What are some things that you say to people who say this? It's helping. It's amplifying. I think that, it, um, that if you embrace it in the right way and realize that this is what newer generations want and are going to be doing, if you embrace it in the right way with a good strategy, it's only going to help you. Um, there's a lot of debate, like the NHL and um, some other um, sports league banned Periscope and Meerkat uh, from there, you know, because there's all these, you know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, discussion on copyright when it comes to Meerkat and Periscope. But if they, if, they, if they were using it correctly, they can have, you know, they can have great success. The NBA is doing a, well, not, not the NBA. There's a, there's a team in the NBA, and I can't remember which team it is right now, but they have embraced social and they're doing it the right way. So um, I'm going to talk about that as well. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I definitely see that. But, you know, yeah, it's never right to go into a movie and scope your movie, you know. But, you know, pirates have been doing that for, you know, for a while. Um, but, you know, using it to promote your movie and using it to amplify that and draw people to what you're doing is, is you know, is a great way to use it. So do you think, say, during a movie, if you tell the watching, um, of course, you're going to have people who are going to violate, but most people tend to follow the rules. If you allow maybe Periscope moments in between the movie, do you think this will like, get maybe like people in the movie industry to like kind of embrace it more? If maybe. I mean, if there's like, if it's, if it's like a short stop, like to do a little review and be like, and, you know, and you have the phone pointing at your face and be like, oh my gosh, I'm watching Jurassic Park, you know, 300, whatever. <laughs> It is amazing. I love it. Oh my gosh, everyone needs to come and see it. Things like that. That's fine because you're the one broadcasting yourself. Um, and Brian Fanzo, who, who I'm a huge, huge fan of. I love Brian. Um, he's a friend. Um, oh, he, yeah, I, I, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook too. And I, I, I'm a friend of him on, on Meerkat. Oh, yeah. he's awesome. Brian is, I mean, Brian rocks it at Meerkat and Periscope. He is, I mean, he's been dubbed the future of social media. So anyone that's not following him, you need to follow him. Uh, but Brian is amazing, and um, and he did something really, really interesting because a lot of people that got shut down during the Maypac fight that were streaming their you know their pay per view, a lot of people got shut down. You know that was the big thing. Like it came, it was a lot of debate. People were like initially worried that people were going to live stream the fight. No, the issue wasn't live streaming the fight. The issue was the people that were live streaming their pay per view. So they would have uh, they would have on their you know thing like I'll save you hundred dollars watch the fight with me and they were live streaming their TV so oh, wow. crazy crazy stuff so there were about I guess I think Periscope said there were about sixty streams doing this um, they shut down about thirty or so I mean that they could you know they shut some of them down you know um, but what Brian did was different instead of scoping the fight he had the fight he bought the fight but he scoped. Him and his and his friends watching the fight, so it was really cool because you, you I mean it was like having those friends with you, you know. So it was really different, and I love how he gets it. He really gets it, and he said the you know he said the future of the internet of social media or internet is video, um, you know. But it is now, you know. This is now. This is what's going on. So 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I mean, you can tell I'm super excited about it. <laughs> and I'm here with you, like, Woo! I'm like, yes. This is like a so, very exciting talk we're having. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go. Yeah, so I mean, well, like I said, and I've been using it from day one. I keep tabs on everything that comes out related to Periscope and Meerkat. And I just, I mean, I truly enjoy it. So. Well, great. Well, I think, you know, it was great talking to you that you gave us amazing information, you know, and I know you're going to even hit it even more information at social we'll rock the house. <laughs> Yeah, so where can people find you on Twitter? Again, let's just repeat it. I know you said it earlier. Twitter, it's at Kathy Hackle. So C-A-T-H-Y-H-A-C-K-L. Yeah, it's Hackle, not Hacker. You know, I, yeah, I get all kinds of weird, confusing things. But uh, at Kathy Hackle, um, same thing on Periscope and Meerkat. And, um, you know, LinkedIn, same thing. So, And on Facebook, too, because you have your... Um, on Facebook, I have my, you can follow me. Um, you can follow like some of my business posts that you'll see. Yeah. Um, and you can also find my business page at Global, Be Globally Social. So that's the name of my business, Globally Social. My Facebook is Be Globally Social. So. And we are at Florida Social Con, everyone. Um, hashtag FL Social Con and follow along. And we're going to be, of course, sharing some of Kathy's great periscopes. If she, meerkats or whatever, if she saves them and we can, yeah. Repeat them and share before she posts. Do you, do you schedule yours ahead of time? Or? Uh, sometimes I do. I mean, th that's the beauty of it, though. Sometimes it has to be so immediate and so just spare the moment. You know, sometimes if you, like something really ha something really cool happened or you see something really cool, you just scope a mirror at that moment because that's what's going on. So. Oh, exciting. Exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for being with us today. Thank you, Kathy. And I'm going to mirror cat with you. Yes, we're going to do a little Periscope interview in a couple minutes. I don't have Periscope, but it doesn't matter, right? I'm just going to... It doesn't matter, because we're going to do it through Google Hangout on air. So okay. don't worry. I've got it all organized and set up. All right. All right. Signing off. Bye. Bye.